So let's just review what we're trying to do. Okay, we're gonna take the videos that we create, all right? We're gonna upload those to the Logger Pro program, all right? And remember, our objective is to get videos of objects that are in constant acceleration. So to the best of our ability, we're gonna find objects, we're gonna create things that are situations with constant acceleration. Then we're gonna upload them and create graphs of those objects, hopefully undergoing constant acceleration, we'll get their displacement, we'll get their velocity, we'll find their acceleration, and we'll really see how uh, how constant that acceleration was. Does that make sense? With a tennis ball, you could, you could create a catapult out there with a ball or a rock, and you can launch it. That'll be an object that's in free fall, so it'll be accelerating. So one thing we should talk about is if you push it, you're giving it initial velocity. But if you just let it go, its initial velocity is zero, right? Okay, so once we um, have our video, basically what we're gonna do is we take it and upload it into the Logger Pro program. We insert it as a movie, and then we are gonna go um, and do an analysis of the time versus distance and time versus velocity. Now before we do this, do you think this is gonna be different from a projectile? Yes. Yeah. Is Alyssa going to become a projectile maybe at some point? <laughs> When she does like oh, when she does so, and the other question is, when we have a large object, not like a little tennis ball, what point are we going to focus on? Because we can't put our dot on, you know, her whole body. So, what are we going to? Her feet. The ball at center. I think. <laughs> I think you should go center of gravity, like right at her hips. Basically, what we do is we we first um, show the program where the meter stick is. So we're telling it basically how big a meter is in the video. And then we start plotting points of the object, whatever it is, whether it's a tennis ball or a person or a, um, a football, we can plot um, that object in the air and the computer is plotting it at, in terms of time versus distance. In other words, where is it in relation to how long the experiment's going on. And then we can, based on that, do things like find its velocity and its acceleration. Change of velocity over time. From right here, I'm going to pick this point right here, to here. Is she accelerating? This is time versus distance, right? Yes. So the slope of time versus distance tells us what? The velocity. The velocity. Do you think that there's a fairly constant slope here? Yes. So is velocity constant or constantly changing? Constantly changing. So that means if you had to describe her velocity through this whole thing, right? Sort of curves up, so she's accelerating. Then she reaches constant velocity and goes through the rest of her flips at a constant velocity. Really, that's what's happening. Uh, what I got out of it was that uh, gravity affected the, the free fall more than the uh, rolling down the hill, even though I thought that they would both be almost equally affected. So it was like the thought that, oh, because it's rolling down the hill and gravity affects it to go down the hill, I thought it would almost have like, the, the same as the free fall one. Okay. The graphs and the data undid that. I realized after thinking about that, it made sense since if you're going down a hill, you just go faster and faster and not have the same acceleration the entire time. So the so the ball rolling down the hill was still accelerating. Yes. But are you saying it wasn't accelerating as 
as fast as the ball in the air. Yes. Okay. Does that make sense? And how does the graph prove it? Uh, the, the graph proved it because um, it was like the velocity of the free fall one went up and down, and when you used a quadratic fit, it had like the a squared value was almost perfectly half of gravity, mm -hmm. while if you quadratic fit the uh, ball rolling down the hill, or at least the volleyball one, it had a not a closely related acceleration to gravity. gravity. Yeah. So it was some component of gravity, but it wasn't half of it. And if you think about this equation that we've used, right, one half of or basically one half of gt squared or at squared, that's going to be negative 4.9 if we have an object in free fall. But if we have an object rolling down the hill, it's, it's some other component of gravity. It's not necessarily half. Uh, this is Shane's kick in the soccer ball. Okay. The red represents the change in x direction, and the blue represents the change in y. So, big picture, why is the red graph linear and the blue graph quadratic? Uh, big picture is the red graph is linear because it's moving at a constant rate um, horizontally, and the blue graph is quadratic because of the change in uh, acceleration as it gets higher and then lower due to gravity. Looking at that red graph, is the ball that Shane kicked moving at a constant velocity horizontally? How can you tell from looking at that graph? It's moving at a constant rate downward, so it's very constantly across horizontally. Okay, so this is deceiving because the graph makes it look like the ball's going down. If we think about the graph like this. But really, the ball went up and down. So why don't we see that in the red graph? The red graph's like tracking its motion from side to side rather than up and down, so gravity has no effect on it. Think about the x-axis as time, intervals of 0.1 seconds or whatever the time interval is, right? And the, the um, y values are just a distance, right? So it's a change in, change in y over x is just a change in the distance over time. And that's constant going this way. Even after it bounced, it had the same acceleration. So even it, it hits that ground for an instant, goes back up and down, but it's back in free fall as soon as it's back in the air, right? There's no other force acting on it other than a little bit of air resistance. Okay, so it's, it's kind of one thing to, um, to put all this data in a table, but it's another thing to interpret it. So how can we interpret what we see here? It seemed like the velocity was relatively constant, or constantly changing. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like the acceleration, though, I may have, I don't know if it was just the points I chose or something, but I feel like it's off because it's so varied. Mm -hmm. So that might be a flaw in my own uh, data. But. You guys look at his velocity averages in the D column. What do you see? What what could you say about if you go from 1.4 to negative 0.8 to 1.9? What do you see there? I think it's because I took the points so close to each other because yeah. they were all like within a thousand or a few thousand of thousandths of right. a second. Um, unlike the bottom table where I took it every maybe two every second. Yeah. So it was a little bit better.